There we are. Turn my mute off, and uh, we're set for, uh, actually, believe it or not, I think it's very important in light of the Boston massacre to take in uh, some calls uh, today. So I will give out the numbers right now. People can begin calling in at their convenience uh, to help me uh, discuss this uh, tragedy. Now, in terms of sheer numbers, of course, uh, every life lost is obviously priceless and an irreplaceable uh, asset. So certainly the relations of the victims of the bombing of the three so far that I am aware of that died are to be uh, given our compassion and uh, maintained in our thoughts. And of course there was almost a hundred other people who have uh, passed uh, due to the um, result of this atrocity. So um, we want to keep them in mind. At the same time, the first thing that strikes me about this terrorist act is the small amount of people, comparatively speaking, who have uh, died uh, as a direct result of an act of terror. So it is made to appear to be a very amateurish assault, and I do not uh, instinctively believe that that may be the case. I believe that this might be uh, something that involves black operations, and I will express my suspicions behind that, and uh, we will uh, bandy that about with our uh, listenership. In the meantime, I am posting my uh, schedule for tonight uh, quite late. Uh, there is an enormous amount of information that I have pumped into my schedules uh, that I hope will alert and educate and inform people. So I would um, beseech upon uh, anyone who is listening right now to review my schedules and uh, take what you can from them, uh, spread the word about the information that I am uh, disseminating through them and help make others aware of uh, where we stand in terms of, say, for instance, the imposition of daylight savings. Uh, the imposition of daylight savings is something that uh, I do want people to understand is not uh, something that helps you. It was never meant to help you. It was never meant towards conservation of energy. It was never meant towards uh, the um, uh, some kind of... Uh, shall we say, efficiency in production. It was always proven, wherever it was applied, uh, to be an ergonomic, meaning a unit of labor, uh, a productivity measurement science uh, disaster. So the reason that uh, it is not maintained in any of the uh, foundation economies of our world today, which are, of course, the powers of the East, uh, Japan at the forefront, China, South Korea, Taiwan, the nation of my birth, none of these nations uh, apply uh, the daylight saving um, uh, imposition, uh, nor does the majority of the world. Uh, and overwhelmingly, the map of uh, East Asia and Africa is clear clean of the daylight saving imposition. So why is it applied here? It is applied here in the United States and wherever the United States has had military uh, occupation affiliation with such as Iran and uh, al Surya. Um, believe it or not, uh, Iran has maintained uh, daylight saving ever since the time of the Shah and the imposition on the part of SAVAK, the Shah's Intelligence and Repression Unit, which was, of course, <coughs> excuse me, <laughs> allied <laughs> with the United States. <coughs> Do call in and relieve my voice. <coughs> Through CENTO, the Central Treaty Organization. And the Central Treaty Organization was, of course, Southwest Asia's version of NATO. And uh, the Southwest Asian version of NATO incorporated the United States, and it incorporated uh, Turkey, and it incorporated uh, Al Iraq, and it incorporated uh, Iran of the Shah. Uh, during that period of time, of course, daylight saving was imposed by the American government through diplomatic connections with those governments. 
as a population suppression technique on behalf of their uh, tyrannical administrations. Uh, in one case, in Iraq, was, of course, a Ba'athist uh, Arab Socialist Party of uh, Saddam Hussein. The other was, of course, uh, in, on the part of uh, the Shah of Iran. By the way, you'll have to forgive me um, in terms of my inability um, to speak right now. There is an enormous amount of scheduling that I was dealing with until uh, right at this moment. Um, and uh, all of that will be left clear in the next week, so I can use that, take advantage of that to catch up on finally. Accepting the friend requests of many people who were uh, um, asking uh, to e-friend me on my Facebook page, I can catch up with that and a number of other responsibilities. Robert Papino is online right now, so I do hope that he Skypes in. I do want to remind everyone that our call-in numbers are 347 area code 688-2902. Once again, that's 1-347-688-2902. And uh, do... Um, take advantage of that and uh, discuss with us your understanding of what has been happening so far with the Boston Massacre. And on my part, of course, I would like to remind you that you can Skype us through Freedom Screen, all lowercase, all one word. Do remember to help uh, expedite this process in the future by e-friending, uh, or excuse me, Skype-friending Amad Painter, who is, of course, my, the Skype ID. Amad Painter is the Skype ID for my producer, Thomas Becker. So Amad Painter is, of course, all lowercase, all one word, A-M-A-D-P-A-I-N-T-E-R. So uh, do join us um, throughout this conversation today on what is the first uh, digital broadcast that I am performing. Uh, so recently, uh, after um, this um, this this atrocity, so I will begin to cover the significance of it from my understanding of it so far. The first thing that I will do, having not had a moment's time to even review what has been going on to uh, any great extent, is I am going to uh, try and upload some information that has been provided for me by my producer. Uh, concerning uh, who bombed Boston and uh, we, he himself is of course thinking very logically and uh, like many Americans who has a great deal of common sense this looks to him to be uh, something that an amateur would do because of the amount of technology involved the uh, way that it was performed and I really would like to bring him on to bring us his perspective on that because I believe he articulated it so well earlier today when I had the privilege of speaking with him. So, uh, Mr. Becker, if you would be so kind, if you could come on air with us, do explain to us what you understand of the Boston Massacre, what you think of who bombed Boston, and uh, give us some of your perspective on that, and then I will respond and outline basically the significance of well, uh, the date and the action. So please commence. Good well, sir. thank the, you so much. I, I don't believe it was uh, a black op operation. I don't believe it was a government. I just the fact that the, the bomb was set off with a cell phone shows me that it was an amateur. You don't create bombs and place them someplace where there's a million people with phones. I mean, the chances of a wrong number hitting your number is pretty high. I mean, he would have been safer yes. off using a garage door opener remote, you know, in a city like that where there isn't garage door openers. You know, it's uh, a, 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 a really a, a, somebody with any kind of training would have built a foolproof arming mechanism that wouldn't be interfered by chance when you're carrying the bomb to the site. Mm-hmm. And, or you'd have uh, had to no. arm the bomb there, and that would have been caught. Mm -hmm. And uh, in terms of uh, the uh, perpetrator and trying to define the parameters of how we would, uh, say, for instance, profile uh, such an individual or a group of individuals, uh, you made mention of the car door opener analogy. Please uh, express that for our listening audience, because I think that that was brilliant. Well, in a big city, you don't have a bunch of car a garage door opens open because there are only so many frequencies that they use for them. So if you're carrying a bomb that's hooked up with one of them through a residential section, somebody might open the garage door and blow you up. Mm -hmm. And it's the same. Yeah. 
in the city, there wouldn't be the garage doors, you know. He would have been safer with that than with a cell phone where you got, what, how many people were at that place? Well over a million? Uh, I'll take your word on that. I know that there's, it's like San Francisco's beta breakers. We had a number of people who just participate because it is very much a fun event, and uh, they participate uh, wearing costumes. So they're not in it, obviously, to win the race. Yeah. No one is expecting uh, to win when they're uh, wearing an M&M suit. And, uh, or by that I mean not the rapper. Uh, they're dressed <laughs> like a giant M&M. And uh, so in, in well, terms see, people of, do um, do this Boston Marathon and take hours to finish the race. After yes. the race is over with, just to say that, well, I, you know, I did the Boston Marathon, you know. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So, and and, and fact, they didn't. The, the the bombs weren't placed in the right areas for a professional. They would have done it for maximum casualties. Right. And it absolutely. wasn't anywhere close to where maximum casualties would have happened. That's right. I did start off uh, uh, speaking about it by mentioning the uh, small number of people, comparatively speaking, who died, uh, which is what makes me highly suspect. Uh, so uh, very much thank you for that, Mr. Becker. Very much appreciate it. We may bring you on again in just a few moments uh, if my uh, voice begins to die again. Also, whenever I'm... <laughs> Whenever my voice goes through phases like that, uh, due to uh, my uh, lungs being stapled to my rib cage and whatnot, sometimes uh, we suffer that. Anyone who uh, suffers as I do from 30% lung capacity every once in a while, it's to be expected that the phlegm overwhelms my ability to speak. Do not be afraid, of course, sir, to uh, intervene, uh, come on air, and uh, speak for a few minutes to fill in air time while I grab a drink. <laughs> so... <laughs> Just for future reference. Now, in now, the meantime, I, now that, that stuff was just, you know, with a little bit of information that I did receive. I didn't follow it like everybody else did yesterday. I was busy with, you know, getting my show, so I didn't uh, have a chance to check it all out. And I, I uh, uh, today I worked, so I wasn't around today. So I didn't really get a bunch of checking done on it. But I do know that there was a lot of rumors of there being a bomb <laughs> drill. During, you know, it's supposed to be going on. They even announced it on the videos and stuff that, you know, not to panic, this is a, this is a drill. Very strange. I thought that Very was strange. real strange. Well, um, that, of course, would reinforce my suspicions of the black op. We will go into that, uh, certainly, uh, commencing right now. So I'll begin with that. And as I said, Mr. Becker, uh, we may bring you on. Don't be afraid to, of course, I know you're already multitasking and taking care of uh, multiple responsibilities. Uh, but if you have the technical capacity to kind of scan and search and, uh, and, and uh, surf the net while uh, I'm discussing things on air and while you're pulling people in who may decide to call or Skype us or ask questions through the chat room, don't be afraid to uh, bring up anything new that might come in. I'm sure there's going to be breaking news uh, potentially within the next two hours. Uh, nothing uh, in terms of a hunch or anything like that, but in events like this, there usually tends to be streaming information that comes in in uh, bits and pieces. Uh, so uh, one of the more surrealistic photos, and thank you again, Mr. Becker, you're the best. One of the more surrealistic photos that we've uh, seen has been, of course, the... Uh, photo of, uh, there's so many of them, but one that stuck in my mind was the image of uh, after the bombing when people were being carried away in stretchers, and there was, of course, someone dressed as a giant chocolate M&M who was standing by looking puzzled, and uh, it was so bizarre um, that my manager, as Lorian Ann Fenton, uh, honestly suspected that it was a uh, computer graphic insert, and I assured her it was not, that many people run these marathons dressed in uh, every type of costume imaginable, dressed as Elvis, uh, dressed as fairies, uh, dressed as uh, um, Pinhead from the Hellraiser uh, um, series of films, uh, just different subjects that you can uh, that you can imagine as being rather outlandish, and um, and people take this opportunity to express themselves uh, with various forms of cosplay, as it's called. 
So, uh, aside from that M&M, one of the things that made it even more surrealistic that he was he was looking down upon an American flag, which was all rolled up and in the film. Now, the flag was all rolled up as if it had been used to soak up blood or, or more appropriately, to serve as a pillow. It uh, had soaked up some blood in that, uh, in that uh, manner, uh, but it was rolled up as if it were used to prop somebody's head up on the ground and uh until uh, a stretcher could bear them away so it uh was a very potentially impromptu scene that however is what i would be more prone to look at as almost a computer graphic insert or as a um a kind of uh setup where somebody actually brought that there and put it on the scene to photograph because it is uh, so strangely pat that a rolled up, blood saturated American flag would be right there at the scene of uh, what was essentially a ground zero for the bombs. And uh, whenever we have these various tragedies take place, these American flags just pop up everywhere. Uh, the flag of the Union as some kind of poignant very uh um apropos symbol of of what <laughs> of of the suffering of uh random american people uh in this particular uh empire uh you can no longer define it as a republic or a nation state we are the center of empire and at this point as i have said before the tragedy of the situation the cycle of violence is that because I myself, for utterly selfish reasons, in terms of caring enough about uh, the decent uh, Americans who have truly been kind enough uh, to manifest empathy for the situation of myself or my family while I have been living uh, in this North American continent, uh, who have responded uh, creatively and uh, productively to the information I have had to expose uh, about this uh, empire that we live in. Uh, such people would make me want to preserve the status quo of our current state for as long as possible. Uh, unfortunately, the inevitability is collapse because of the sheer corruption, the sheer incompetence, the schizophrenic morass of our bureaucratic uh, Soviet state, which has imposed itself uh, over the American people, uh, that, uh, that I cannot uh, rightfully say that I want it to fall tomorrow and uh, because of the injustice that the empire itself is promoting and uh, imposing on other peoples throughout the world. So we have a large population here, the third largest in the world, and a great deal of people would suffer with the collapse of that empire. That empire, of course, is based on the promotion of narcotic sales, uh, far more than anything having to do with oil, far more than anything having to do with its grain distribution to the rest of the world as a food power, the preeminent food power in the world, as what has been the, up to uh, recently the breadbasket of the world. So far more than that, we are reliant on our Southwest Asian investments in the Afpakia theater of war, uh, Afban Afghanistan and Pakistan, and uh, the maintenance of the inflow of raw opium poppies from Afghanistan into Pakistan, where such opium poppies are uh, basically converted into high-grade heroin through synthetic uh, industrial means. So with this situation that's ongoing right now, as horrible as that is, uh, with all the lives that those drugs destroy, there is no way that I can uh, rightly say that I want its immediate collapse because of the immense suffering that would, it would lead to immediately on the American home front. Uh, if that drug money stopped coming in, all of our checks would stop, not just the government checks of the filthy bureaucrats who run this empire into the ground in their uh, horribly spoiled, uh, well-insured, uh, permanently stable lives, but also in the lives of all Americans who are scrabbling hand-to-mouth, whose lives, their very existences, depend on welfare checks, 
social security checks, uh, all of that would stop. There would be no money to pay for it were the drugs to stop flowing from out of Southwest Asia into Europe, which is, at this point in history, the largest economy in the world. Certainly uh, not the uh, United States. Now, I've just been informed of something very interesting from my producer through the text box, that there is a picture of Steven Spielberg helping the victims of the Boston Marathon bombing. Now, that alone is um, very suspect. <laughs> that is I posted very it suspect. in the chat room. Thank you. I very much appreciate that. That uh, the um, now here's something interesting that I've just got on the uh, a message and email from someone as well in terms of who bombed Boston. Word for now is caution. The U.S. government and Jewish officials are advising against speculation in the wake of the Boston Marathon bombing. Now, does that statement make any sense to you? The U.S. government. And Jewish officials are advising against speculation. Why on earth would Jewish officials uh, suddenly uh, figure into the equation? It's very bizarre to me. Uh, but uh, in, in terms of the um, conspiracy-mindedness of someone who has worked in security, let's first uh, deal with the significance of the date and uh, respond simultaneously to uh, what our producer Thomas Becker has brought up from his perspective, which is the perspective of common sense. Um, the reason that Mr. Becker's uh, opinion is almost certainly wrong, <laughs> in my opinion, is because it is based on common sense. Mr. Becker is thinking logically. He is thinking, uh, you know, what would I do if I were truly some uh, evil person of, uh, of intellect uh, who had a plan? and wanted to do as much damage to America as possible at a time like this. So uh, your government has never, ever in a million, well, it has been around for a million years. That's part of the problem. And certainly will be around far less than most other governments in world history. But your government does not think with anything that borders on logic. So uh, the United States government, were it to participate in a black op against its own people, would make the bomber look as stupid as possible, would make the bomber look as amateurish as possible, and then take whatever measures they wanted uh, from that point forward. Because if they made it look too good, then they would basically make it look professional and then make it look as if the government had done it. Uh, first off, if the North Koreans had done it, as some people are speculating, is this something from North Korea? Why would they resort to something as penny ante, as petty, as ridiculous as this, comparatively speaking, again, not to demean the suffering for the individuals who have lost family in this event, and their suffering is, of course, inexpressible. We do not, there's no way to express what someone goes through with something like this. It's terrible. Uh, but the number of people that died, three uh, about 100 casualties. Now, there are suicide bombings in al-Iraq that take out more people than this, many more people. There are uh, all kinds of bombings all over the world that take out all kinds of people. Now, the idea of this being some amateur with a cell phone is, of course, as Mr. Becker says, absurd. Now, we don't know if a cell phone was used to trigger it. Using his logic and his common sense, maybe some information he's gotten that I don't know about, he has assumed on the basis of what he's been told in the news that it was a cell phone that was used to trigger it. Now, this is my understanding of it because I have heard nothing on the news. I have yeah, literally now, not heard. Everything I've said was just speculation now. Yeah, based on common sense from what right. the facts that you had. Right. right. Understood. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Now, I have not listened to a single report on this. I have purposefully refrained from looking at anything on the net. I have purposefully refrained from looking at anything on uh, the television. I have not listened to the radio about it. And the reason that I do that is because I wait for information to come from me from others who do that, who process as much as they can. Uh, and uh, it tends to be a much better way of analyzing situations like this because when you get it from the media directly there is an incredibly hypnotic effect of the information you receive uh, that um, you it is preferable to have that information filtered 
through men and women of common sense. Now, uh, my understanding from what little I was exposed to inescapably uh, by being in restaurants, by uh, stepping outside, um, was that the moment the bombing took place, the United States government shut down all cell phone towers in region because of the potential that the bomb may have been triggered by a cell phone. Now, they did this because, ironically enough, the Jewish government, or more specifically, more appropriately, more properly, the Israeli government has in the past used cell phones as trigger mechanisms and cell phones as bombs themselves when dealing with Palestinian liberation organization resistance leaders. So what the Israeli government has done has literally put plastic or various other um, uh, small amounts of thermite, very, very high-tech plastic explosive materials into cell phones which have wound up in the hands of uh, Arab leaders that were triggered remotely when the Arab leader answered a cell phone call. And by answering the cell phone call, he puts the explosive within the cell phone right next to his ear and it blows his head off. Now, this has literally happened. This, this operation, you can vet this. You can look this up on search engines because uh, these were public enough assassinations by Mossad where there was no avoiding the uh, backlash of uh, international outrage. Now, um, that's what makes it all the more interesting that we have a uh, prominent, preeminent Jewish American, Steven Spielberg, on site. Uh, we have uh, these Jewish officials who are advising uh, to avoid speculation in this. Now, all of that should have been avoided by the Israelis or the Jewish community because of the fact that um, this leads to anti-Semitic speculation. Now, uh, Israel should refrain from any statement on it. They should say no comment. Uh, the Jewish community itself may not be involved, admittedly, uh, but Steven Spielberg going out there, um, I don't know, it does more harm for the Jewish community than good. Uh, now, in terms of the other significant uh, aspect of the cell phones, the cell phone towers were shut down a standard operational procedure, uh, otherwise known as SOP by its acronym. And uh, the SOP in any bomb site is for the U.S. government to come in and shut off all cell phone towers. And they tell you it's because this is out of concern that cell phones may be used as trigger mechanisms for various explosives in the area. All of that is, of course, pure crap. But uh, Mr. Becker has just articulated, will uh, put that into perspective for you. There's no one who is going to uh, set off a bomb intentionally uh, unless he is uh, auto-destructive in the most insane way imaginable, so nihilistic he doesn't care about his own life. Now, this is different from a suicide bomber. Even a suicide bomber will make certain, if at all possible, uh, if they have any brains about them, that their explosives will not go off until they are on target. They are not going to throw away their lives needlessly or uselessly they want their life to be their life to be expended uh, in a statement they want their life to be expended in a way that in their own uh, paradigm however twisted uh, in in a manner which matters so uh, if someone were to as mr. Becker articulated sell off, set off a bomb to trigger by a cell phone anyone, could dial that number accidentally. People do so all the time, and he'll be carrying it en route and blow up himself before even making a statement. So this is a situation in which the government is lying to you, and the reason that they cut off all service from cell phone towers in region is because the United States government wants to prevent anyone on site from calling out with any information they might have about witnessing the men in dark suits who carry the bombs onto site, as well as preventing anyone on site from taking images, photographic images, cell phone, camera images, and video, and being able to project that to the outside world from the impacted area. Because inevitably, in most cases, the uh, U.S. government is involved 
And what is going to happen is that they will project images which will incriminate the U.S. government. If the U.S. government were not involved, they would say, keep all the cell phones operating. We want as much communication between people as possible so we can get as much information out to the taxpaying American electorate as possible so that they can help us in locating the perpetrators. Now, the greatest asset to any law enforcement operation in terms of locating perpetrators is the public. This is why John Walsh set up America's Most Wanted, which sadly is no longer extant, no longer operational. John Walsh went to retire. Apparently there was no one else uh, with his level of dedication and motivation to carry on that public service. Now, John Walsh, uh, of course, was an example of how the public would solve cases at a statistically higher rate than the police departments. The police departments are strapped for personnel. They're strapped for uh, available time. They're strapped for resources. And the public can compensate for that. That is what John Walsh represented as a missing link. Now, that's gone, and the U.S. government could easily, oh, so easily, have dedicated the, any amount of money to set up a public coordination system based on the John Walsh model that would have made John Walsh's operation look rinky-dink. John Walsh's operation was literally a one-man operation in many respects. Now, he got a lot of assistance, got a lot of volunteers, uh, but this was not government funded or sponsored. And the government could have picked up the slack, carried on John Walsh's operation, replaced him with some other um, authoritative looking figurehead, uh, and went on to continue solving crimes that uh, otherwise would be insoluble. But no, they did not maintain that operation because there is always the danger it would incriminate their own black operatives. Now, this is why the cell phones are taken out by the U.S. government on site. They're doing that, you know they're involved. Because they don't want people photographing the men in dark suits. And believe me, the government is so stupid, so incompetent, so ridiculous, that whenever they perform these operations, you can smell them a mile away. They look like government. When it came to the Aurora shooting in Colorado, all kinds of people saw different men with the sunglasses, the dark clothing, uh, suit-like appearances. They cannot help themselves. That suit becomes a second skin. And when it looks like you can shoot them and bury them in the same suit, then, yes, you're dealing with government. And at that point, this is how they identify each other. It's like MDs will only speak to other, other stethoscopes. Anyone else is not worth their time on Earth. An MD considers himself a god among men. He's only marry other MDs. Now, when it comes to Marines in particular, but other service personnel, they maintain their hair short, which builds a wall between them and the civilian population. Uh, you take a look at somebody with various hairstyles, and uh, these short hairstyles, they are automatically identifiable uh, pretty much as, gee, that guy must be in the military. Why else would he uh, have some high and tight like that, as they used to call it in the Marine Corps, uh, or a buzz cut, uh, looking like some archy uh, kind of... Uh, what do they call them? Yuppies. Or <laughs> uh, there, there was these uh, uh, frat boys. They used to look like the preppies, of course, had certain looks like that once in a while back in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. Uh, so the military does remind us of that. At any rate, we do have a caller who can uh, help uh, preserve my voice. And I do want to go into the significance of the dates of this bombing and the significance of this entire period of the month. This, he this time he hung up or got kicked. Oh, well, um, 
do your best to drag it back on, if at all possible. If not, don't worry about it. But thank you, Mr. Becker, for informing me. So I will go straight to the significance of the date. Hopefully, uh, 336 will return us his call to us. And uh, the date on which this occurred was, of course, uh, now correct me if I'm wrong on this, Mr. Becker, because the days all fade one into the other for me. Now, um, if I'm still, um, they mark your sanity by your awareness of the date, and of course I would fail every time. But I do think it's the 16th. Now, yesterday when this bomb took place, it was uh, the 15th, which, if I'm not mistaken, is uh, tax day. Yes? Yes, sir. Thank you. I appreciate that. And um, so the automatic assumption would be a protestation of tax. Now, the 15th of April is also of significance because it is the commemorative anniversary date of April 15th of 1861, which was the official start of the United States Civil War between the states. Uh, the declaration of war between the Confederate States of America and the United States took place on April 15th, 1861. Now, uh, coming up on, sa on um, what will be the 17th, which is a uh, Thursday, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, we have the 1961 anniversary of the 1,300 Cuban exiles uh, who invaded Cuba trying to retake the island from the communist dictatorship of Fidel Castro and all 1300 of the Cuban commandos were uh, betrayed and abandoned by John F. Kennedy which was why they were considered one of the primary suspects in the Kennedy assassination in the initial moments of his demise. Now coming up on the 18th, which will be Friday, of course, we have the 1942 uh, commemorative memorial of Jimmy Doolittle on Tokyo. And finally, the most important of all, we have uh, PD-19, which is April 19th, or Patriot's Day, the real Patriot's Day, the genuine Patriot's Day. We will get into that because that date uh, leads us into a whole can of worms, a whole maze of events. So, uh, in the meantime, I will take three, 630 on the air, who's been kind enough to call and uh, rescue me from my conundrum of uh, um, uh, my lung imposition. So, uh, 630, uh, do uh, share with us uh, your impressions or whatever it is that's on your mind uh, here on uh, Tuesday night's Critical Omission. Yeah, something was bothering me. Um, the more, it takes me a couple days to think about things. Um, I think it's like a oh, by the way, sir, uh, if, you, if, if you don't mind, sir, by the way, uh, you, do you want to remain anonymous, or would you like to share a name with us? No, it's RBN. That's fine. You can tell everybody. I don't care. Sure. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you very much for calling in. So, uh, obviously, it, it's been less than two days, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's less than 48 hours. What have you processed so far, and, and what kind of, what kind of uh, impressions are you getting? No, uh, it takes me like a, at least a couple of days or even just a little less than that. But the fact of the matter is, whatever happened in Boston, I don't, I don't think that happened from somebody that knew what they were doing. I, I think, I think uh, that this was another one of those, um, what do you call it, lost legs. Right. Right. Well, well, that's a. Uh, I, I assume that. Uh, you're not contradicting yourself when you say that it looks like someone who doesn't know what they were doing. That kind of looks like uh, my producer's first commonsensical impression that it's very amateurish. Uh, it wasn't strung up. You know, if I you say if I were of real evil intent and wanted to absolutely obliterate the uh, Boston Marathon, I would be setting up bombs everywhere along the line because that line is stretching literally like the San Francisco Beta Breakers for miles. I mean, they've had to stop uh, the majority of traffic. They're uh, basically turned the city into a party zone. You've got people who are uh, not just running but walking. And uh, if I were to string up bombs all the way along the line, I would be sending literally thousands of people, if not thousands and thousands, uh, to the other side. That would right. be something that people would be talking about for years. Instead of putting two rinky-dink bombs near the finish line, I mean, like, how many people even make it 
to the finish line of the Boston Marathon. Certainly a minuscule percentage compared to the number of people who start the Boston Marathon. And uh, so the, this is obviously something that, as you say, it's either someone who is, doesn't know what they're doing, but then you brought the term false flag. So are you kind of like... Um, just kind of like on the fence right now about what it might be, or, or, or are you kind of leaning towards a black op, like what I'm saying, made to look like a simplistic idiot did it, just so they can start slamming down on whomever they want? Well, they're making it look like somebody as dumb as we are did it, but it's not working. <laughs> Right. Yes. Yes. Thank you. That that says it all, and uh, I I definitely uh, appreciate your saying that. That was pretty much the point I was trying to make. I believe that you yourself uh, have come to the same conclusion through your own logical deduction, and that's exactly it. You've got uh, the, the United States government is trying to make it look like an amateur operation. They make it look so stupid that there's no way people can accept that if they really put their mind to it. Uh, so. Um, by the way, is there anything else uh, you want to add into this, or, or, or do you feel that kind of covers well, what you... Well, I think, it, I think it does. Somebody was mentioning also that uh, all these things happen in April. I can't mention all of them. I mean, um, if, I you, if you look at... Yeah. Uh, this, just, this is just ridiculous. You know, you know what they're doing? They're leading since the Patriot Act and then and the double A or whatever. Uh, and, you know, they're just, they're going to do these things to a point where a big one's going to happen, and then it's going to be a lockdown. And they're going to hopefully, um, you know, uh, you know, get anybody who would resist out of the way before they even do that. That's, that's what my suspicion is. I'm sorry, could you say that again, sir? Because basically, uh, while you were saying that, I, I was just momentarily distracted. Were you, like, of the impression that if they had the impression that's that someone was going to do something that they would just wipe them out before it was done? Is that what you were saying? Well, they're going to they're gonna keep doing these, these things like they just did and up to a certain point, and then hopefully by that time, they'll be able to get everybody out of the way that they need to. Uh, uh, 317, right. mute or I'll hang you up. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, I got you. Thank you. And uh, so 630, uh, I definitely thank you for bringing that perspective up, and I think I understand it, that they're basically, with each one of these atrocities, a certain scapegoat is targeted, which they then kind of eliminate off the playing field. Yeah. 630? Uh, yes. Yes, yes okay, correct, right. correct, correct, because the, the thing is, I think that, that we are going to look, look to something bigger that later right. on, and then hopefully... Hopefully by that time it'll it'll all be set up, and we we won't even know this country anymore. It'll be all over. I mean, you know. But right, and there is another practical uh, matter. By the way, six three zero. I'm going to let you go. I want to thank you very much for your call. Okay. You're always welcome to call back. Thank you so much. And okay. uh, yeah, take care. And 317, I'll bring you on in just a moment. But one of the things that I do need to uh, express is the fact that this serves an incredibly practical purpose by taking away from public speculation concerning North Korea. Because the public was building up to a panic point with America's uh, fear-mongering uh, from the governmental level. And uh, the reality was that if what they tell us is true concerning the communication satellite, which may not be a communication satellite fly, uh, orbiting at a very low level, essentially uh, covering the uh, width of the North American continent about once a day in its orbit, uh, and the two North Korean subs which went off sonar, what I uh, expressed to the public about my concern about a potential triangulation of electromagnetic pulse attack, which would be truly apocalyptic. There is no other word that would do that justice. Cataclysmic, other superlatives, uh, an EMP pulse, uh, no matter how minor, uh, would take out far more than uh, the grid could probably even handle and thereby crash the grid. So, uh, and that, of course, was exactly as I expressed, something which would, if the grid entirely crashed, they couldn't get it back up again. And that we're talking about, uh, you know, the only way they could handle it would be if it were in an isolated area and the rest of the resources could be applied to stop the hemorrhaging. 
But if uh, we had a true electromagnetic pulse, which took out up to 50% of the grid, the rest will crash. It's not going to come back up. And we're down to the level of uh, savagery, anarchy, cannibalism within a very short period of time. Literally within 24 hours, you'd have the cities unlivable. Within about a week, you would have cannibalism so, or, or two uh, at the longest. So, uh, 317, I'd like to bring you online uh, now that we've kind of been taken away from worrying about North Korea. And instead, people are kind of like trying to pin this on North Korea amongst other scapegoats, uh, which is absurd. Uh, what is your impression of this? And, uh, or did something else bring you on for critical omissions tonight? Uh, no, basically, I, uh, a great show tonight, by the way. I agree with your assessment that um, it looks very suspicious. Um, I just wanted to make note that there was a few years ago in the Fort Hood area uh, of Texas that something very similar, this is not the first time that um, the pressure cooker um, has been seen on American soil. I don't know if that's kind of right. widely known, but um, there was a, uh, and it was a young PSC, uh, kind of a popular, um, uh, I can't remember the guy's name, but he was a Muslim soldier who did not, um, who was conscientious, conscientious objector, objector right. to, the, um, to the Iraqi war. And I can't remember the guy's name, but it was, um, it was a few years ago, but neither event uh, when he was finally arrested, I think it was because he was buying may maybe a little bit too much smokeless powder. Um, and a gun right. store uh, clerk turned him in, or, you know, called, and that's how they caught, got him, and he was currently AWOL, or he was AWOL at the time that they got him also, but he had Fort Sill, he had some, not Fort Sill, but some Fort Hood, um, um, you know, some, like, uniforms or whatever to get into Fort Hood um, was, was his potential target, but uh, I guess he's riding away somewhere right now, but um, it's something that wasn't right. really widely publicized, and he was also Muslim, um, yeah. But I kind of, I think I'm of the impression that if, uh, uh, what, I think it's a kind of, uh, I'm going to expect to see a clamp down on things like smokeless powder and things of that nature, uh, ammunition, um, because of the simplicity of the bomb. Um, and I think that's kind of uh, maybe what, you know, as there's gun legislation coming up, well, maybe there's some things that they were naturally not going to get, but... With something like this, well, now smokeless powder for reloaders, uh, black powder, things of that nature. Um, then I think we're going to see some heavier limits on that, which will ultimately affect ammunition. Uh, would have yes. Been down to. Um, no, you're absolutely and as well, right. uh, as a um, former ordnance professional myself, I'll tell you that uh, cell phones themselves, you know, uh, depending on the level of sophistication, cell phones are used all the time in improvised devices and are not as dangerous as one would think. Um, but I do agree with your assessment all the way, in principle, uh, most definitely. No, thank you, and thank you for clarifying that. Believe me, I'm no, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so tech tarted that I barely am able to operate the laptops in front of me. I need uh, all of the input I can get from men who are far more technically savvy than I am in areas like that. And thank you for clarifying that. We need uh, that kind of information available. And uh, improvised devices and improvised uh, weaponry is also another area of a great weakness for me. Uh, men, of course, who are in special forces sometimes receive very heavy training in improvised uh, explosive devices for obvious yeah. reasons. Uh, yeah. And, of course, we're getting um, all too much experience the wrong way uh, in uh, trying to defuse such uh, implements of destruction over in Al-Iraq have been for a decade at this point. So yeah. it's, it's, a, yeah, it's definitely a situation in which uh, your expertise is appreciated. By the way, do you, are, are you uh, all right with giving us at least a first name as to who you are? Uh, because we sure, sure, sure. Actually, you mentioned my name before. Uh, my name is Desmond Garrett. I'm friends with you on Facebook, and I was, uh, I'm a musician as well. So uh, uh, I, I kind of, uh, you, you kind of gave a shout-out to my band, Cosmic Preachers, at one point. Oh, wonderful. And believe me, they deserve it. And Desmond Garrett, <laughs> believe me, yeah, Desmond Garrett is very much a, uh impressive individual. Uh, his uh, intellect and his common sense shines through in his Facebook communiques. I'm going to have to try and dedicate some more time to uh, speaking to my uh, e electronically extended family on Facebook, and I certainly consider Mr. Garrett uh, uh, one of one of those. And uh, thank you very much, Mr. Garrett, for calling in. Cosmic hey, before, by the way, tell us about your... 
Ted, before you go, tell us about mm-hmm. uh, what you're doing on the circuit now with them. Um, uh, basically, uh, we kind of, um, wow, music is one of those things. Uh, <laughs> we are very, uh, um, a very talented band. We have a talented group of guys, and we uh, play out locally here in the Indianapolis area. Uh, we're from Indianapolis, Indiana, so um, we just kind of play out locally here as much as doing a lot of acoustic shows and what have you. But, um, uh, you know, I don't want to really, I don't want to take too much time to kind of plug the band, and I appreciate the opportunity. Um, but I will say, uh, the guy's name that I mentioned before was, um, his name was Nasser Abdo. Um, yeah. if anyone wanted to look him up, it's, um, A-B-D-O, and he was a, um, a PFC that went AWOL. This was, uh, I think around 2011. Right, um, right. Frame. No, no, you're absolutely right, and I remember that case quite distinctly, uh, along with all too many others that got covered up uh, concerning a individual named Heinrich, uh, who... Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. You remember yeah. him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember any, any details about that that you can share with us? Because, uh, uh, um, of course, I'll have... No, 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 not in, I mean, you know, probably not more than what you are, are aware. Like, say, like, most of that, I don't know what happened to any of those people, but... I. Like, specifically, with, because they were military, they're just gone, you know, I mean, as far as, um, uh, well, I'm not exactly sure, with, with Abdo, I'm assuming that, because uh, there is no other information as far that I've been able to find as far as whether or not he was convicted of anything, or what, you know, it's just that, <laughs> you know, this is what they got, you know, the Army is, you know, he's in Army custody, so... Right. Well, by the way, Mr. Gear, thank you very much. I'm going to be bringing on an unknown phone number sometime soon if they don't. Uh, they seem to be having some trouble breaking through. If Mr. Becker is able to bring him on, I'll, I'll bring him on. But I did, it reminds me of another young Muslim who was actually uh, drawn in by the government, so I'll, I'll tend to that subject. And uh, Mr. Yeah. Garrett, mm-hmm. best to you and the cosmic <laughs> creatures. Do say hello to all of them for me, okay? Thank you very much. I really appreciate the shout-out. I appreciate it, Douglas. Have a good one. Thank you. You're the uh, best. Uh, take care. And uh, we're going to be having a break soon. We're going to um, have my producer restart. So by uh, before the break, I do want to uh, emphasize that there was a young Muslim individual who was actually uh, strung along, and uh, we would call it uh, entrapment <laughs> by any other name. Uh, he apparently was very enthusiastic about his religion to the point of interpreting jihad as a uh, physical uh, crusade, or if you will, uh, or war, holy war against the infidel, as opposed to interpreting it as a spiritual struggle uh, to find oneself. And uh, this particular individual was approached by the FBI and basically uh, was provided explosive materials, uh, provided uh, motivation uh, and basically encouraged to try and bomb the um, Times Square in New York City uh, pretty much to station all of his bombs disguised as Christmas presents underneath the Christmas tree in the center of Times Square in New York City. And the last two minutes we have before the break, think of the absurdity of this that a uh, Muslim individual would uh, want to uh, bomb a effing Christmas tree in Times Square, uh, disguising his, uh, you know, bombs as Christmas presents, and uh, take out uh, maybe, you know, these various uh, people who happen to be around at uh, Christmas time. But um, this young man was stupid enough to uh, buy into this being somehow a productive thing for Islam. But the important thing to remember was that, in this case at least, was not imams or uh, fundamentalist Muslims that were goading him towards this. It was the FBI. And then, of course, just as he was ready to blow, they caught him presented all of this before the American public, to my, to my embarrassment, I don't remember the young man's name, uh, but what people can search engine and perhaps uh, send me information about in the, uh, as the show progresses is exactly uh, what his name was if they look up uh, abortive uh, Times Square Christmas bombing uh, by young Muslim male. And uh, he was an ethnic too, by the way. I, I believe he was um, potentially um, Eritrean. 
um, I might be wrong on that. So do correct me if, I, if my impression is incorrect. But imagine a young ethnic uh, Muslim male and you have the ultimate uh, target scapegoat of a uh, colored person of an exo semi-exotic religion uh, suddenly being brought forward by the FBI. And we caught him just before he did it. We got it down to the wire. We prevented hundreds of you from dying in Times Square at the intent of this evil young fanatic. And it turned out they set it all up in the first place. Uh, but uh, so technically, not that I'm, he's probably better off in jail if he's prone towards any such stupidity. Uh, there is a price one should pay for stupidity if for no other reason than the uh, evolutionary gene pool needs to be chlorinated a bit. But uh, the reality is, uh, technically, he should have been let go <laughs> for, for entrapment, and the uh, and the uh, FBI is the one that should be on the dock. Uh, for the abortive uh, Christmas bombing, because basically what they're doing is they're terrorizing the public by uh, presenting these false flags. So that is, a, as an example, someone that says, who bombed the Boston Marathon? I'm looking at uh, emails coming in, and there are people who say, there are, oh well, we've got the break coming up, and uh, after the break, uh, we will get into the significance of the date of this bombing, I will give a blurb in the numbers again, and thank you for your patience. Uh, stay with us. Uh, the best is yet to come. Okay, we are back. Thank you so very much, and I want to remind everyone that uh, Revolution Radio is, of course, one of the fastest growing of the uh, topic radio uh, digital broadcast networks. And the reason that we are growing so fast, what makes us special, is not only the fact that we try to maintain uh, ongoing live programming 24 hours a day, but also it's based on the fact that we have no corporate sponsorship and are therefore not subject to corporate um, agendas. Uh, because of this, uh, we don't need to uh, have you suffer through massive amounts of advertising. We can keep the talk going for an entire hour at a time. You don't experience that on uh, other networks like American Freedom Radio or Genesis Radio Network. American Re Freedom Radio, for instance, would have advertisements every uh, 15 minutes approximately. Uh, Genesis Radio Network has them every 10 minutes approximately and uh, it's enough to drive anyone mad. So uh, listening to those uh, advertisements can be a chore, and you start dreaming about uh, the various products uh, that they sell, uh, whether <laughs> it's some kind of Russian penis extension or uh, whatever kind of... Uh, you know, thing that they're pushing. Um, we, of course, have our, our local uh, favorites, and uh, one of them, of course, my uh, former uh, producer, uh, Mr. Justin Time, uh, sells the electronic vapor cigarettes, which seem to be sweeping the nation. So hopefully he's doing well for himself with uh, his uh, plastic suck butts. And in the meantime, I have to contend with uh, my own producer, Thomas Becker, of course, uh, the bubbling noise that he makes when his mic is off, um, such as right now when he's uh, taken I in got, the THC. I got one of those the plastic butts in my hand right now. Oh, cool, cool. That's. <laughs> I thought it was the bong again with the peppermint schnapps that he uh, <laughs> inhales the THC through. That's the. Uh, uh, oh, I can't stand that minty aftertaste. I tell you, folks, when he and I get together for that, it just uh, you know um, I don't know where he ever picked that habit up from, but I guess it's cute. Um, so uh, back to what we were going to say. We had, by the way, another unknown caller um, who is welcome to call back in. Apparently, is having some trouble. Uh, either technologically or maybe uh, in terms of courage. They might be no, he's up here. The courage. He's oh, here. He's, he's there? Yeah. Uh, oh, please. I apologize. I don't see the icon. So the, uh, the, at any rate, uh, he bring you on to uh, using critical emissions. Oh, Okay, we uh, definitely are under attack. Our auto server is problems, so hopefully you, uh, my messaging actually, isn't a bit. Actually, it's my internet. Oh, okay. It, I've, I've got something that says instant message is not currently available, so it might be resolved. So we will be unable to um, uh, text each other. 
Uh, so that is unfortunate. Uh, in the meantime, sir, uh, can they hear me on air as far as you know? Yeah, you're on air right now. It's it's it has to do with my it's on my end. Okay. I and, apologize uh, for it. I don't know what's going on. No apologies necessary, Mr. Becker. Uh, you are most certainly not at fault for uh, what's going on. Is it possible for you to bring on? Uh, we have two unknown phone numbers that are coming up on my uh, icon. Don't, so. don't answer them. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We, understood. We, well, we, we, ha we have that unknown caller back now. Okay. Great. Yeah, right. and, yes. Hello. Hi. I I grew up in New England. And, great. And Boston could be considered its capital. This right. is Federal Region 1. Yes. In, in 2004, at the Democratic National Convention, there's a picture of Tom Ridge and Tom Marino, who's still mayor now. They really scared the poop out of him mm -hmm. to crack down on Boston. Then, in 2004, the DNC was security like you couldn't believe. Wow. When Homeland, when Homeland Security plants bombs, they plant training bombs, which are live, right. and, and inert bombs, which are practice bombs. Yes. They had atomic bombs at the 2004 Democratic National Convention. So to say this is a psychops, you know, that, that wasn't really a bomb that went off. It, it didn't have the frequency. A bomb goes boom. It's kind of a bang, okay? And it, and I it mean, I'll... I'll I could believe that. It didn't um, cause mass casualties like whatever they put on a Navy fast mover in 2004 and detonated at sea. Right. And this, this, this same mayor saw that. This is a cash cow to Boston. But I've heard rumors of armor coming up from the south to police the streets, to put more people on the streets. With guns, you know, like I saw. I haven't been back. <laughs> I don't think. Uh, I think 2004 was the last time I was in Boston. It was. It was scary. Right. It was, it was no, a I can of fear. Of, um, it, and uh, by the way, um, right. By the way, do you want to share with us your first name at least, or do you want to remain anonymous? Well, I'm, I'm Jam, but I have a long Polish last name like uh, Travetsky. <laughs> Wonderful. And the Polish that, flag right. was prominent, prominent there in that bombing too. It was, it was, uh, right. It got, it got to me because the Russians took out the whole Polish government in one fell swoop. Right. Right. No, I can imagine. Well, we've got a lot of uh, callers coming in, Jan. I really want to thank you very much for calling in. You're always welcome to call back. Your connection isn't the best in the world, and your voice is coming through uh, very, um, I wouldn't say distorted, but it's very uh, very hollow sounding in the way it's transmitting. So hopefully the next time you call us, we'll have a much better connection. But your call, believe me, your points are well taken. So I want to thank you for calling. Up, and up the porcupines uh, in New Hampshire and, uh, and the Live Free or Die State and, and Vermont, where anybody can carry a gun whenever they feel threatened. Aloha. Yes, thank you. That is uh, uh, apparently why my distant relation who uh, built the Vietnam Memorial Wall, uh, Maya oh, Ying oh. Lin, sat there. Yeah. I'm sorry? Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm having a very difficult time hearing Jan, uh, but I want to thank him for calling. I'm going to bring in uh, uh, Christian Wallace eventually. Uh, Christian Wallace is on Skype, and he, he knows the game well enough where he can be patient. Thank you, Mr. Wallace, for your patience. We've got three other unknown phone numbers in front of me aside from Jan. So, Jan, if you're able to pump one last thing out to our audience before you uh, leave, go ahead and do so, and I'm going to let you go. I, I don't think he's able to really communicate very well. He's not uh, uh, particularly. He just yeah. done hung up. Yeah. That's fine. We have three other unknown phone number icons in front of no, me. You can bring on any one of them. You're in the wrong chat. That's all. You're in the one we had a minute ago, and that was all him. Okay. Great. Wonderful. So I'll bring on Christian Wallace with his uh, Skype. And Mr. Wallace, I like your four-square image of yourself. Uh, is that symbolize anything? Uh, yeah, kind of. The four corners, you know. It's a, it's a cool. whole uh for another show, but I'll, I'll explain it one day. Um, I right. just bear with me. I, I had uh, um, dental work done, periodontal work, so um, if my voice is a little bit um, you know, hard to hear. But 
but um, I had a whole list of things that happened in April, like 30 different things in my notebook, which I can't seem to locate. So off the oh, top of fine. my head. How, how, how about I, I shoot some off and I want your response on them. Basically, I do want to emphasize to everyone that April uh, 19th in particular is of uh, very important significance because Patriot's Day was based on the um, April 19th commemorative memorial date of the shot heard round the world. This was the 1775 American Revolution, which began at Lexington and Concord. That took place on April 19th. It has since become a day that commemorates the memorials of various massacres and atrocities usually perpetrated by the United States government. Uh, April 19th was the same date of Ruby Ridge and the entrapment, uh, attempted entrapment, and ultimately the attempted massacre of uh, the family of uh, the individual whose name I forget, Mr. Wallace will remember him. Uh, it was also the day of... Uh, thank you, sir. I couldn't have gotten that out without you. It was also the, the, aside from the attempted date of the massacre of the Weaver family, was also the date of, of course, the Waco massacre, and uh, the Waco massacre uh, took place uh, while they were doing their best to uh, frame uh, David Koresh for child molestation, amongst any number of other charges, uh, weapons uh, uh, hoarding uh, and whatnot. And uh, they took a peaceful international religious community. There were people from all over the world who died at Waco. Uh, I met my Serbian girlfriend, uh, Svetlana who had been a former follower of uh, David Koresh. Uh, she knew him back uh, in the days when he was Vernon Howell, uh, when he was just leading a rock band. She'd been a rock band groupie of his who stayed on with him after he became, uh, quote, unquote, the Messiah. Uh, she was on her way to join uh, Serbian family members at the community when the siege took place, and she was not allowed to break through the siege lines and had to watch while her family burned alive, along with many other people. So that took place again on April 19th, and uh, as a strike back against that, uh, our um, one of the almost perfect soldiers, uh, Mr. Timothy McVeigh, uh, took on the uh, role of victim or scapegoat, uh, along with everyone else who was victimized by the Oklahoma City bombing. And uh, that again was uh, April 19th uh, in supposed retaliation by the United States militia movement on behalf of the victims of Ruby Ridge and the Waco massacres. We also, of course, have the very day after, uh, the 20th of April is Adolf Hitler's birthday. So April 19th, or Patriot's Day, is essentially Adolf Hitler's birthday eve day. Now, April 20th was, of course, the 1792 French Revolutionary War's commencement when France declared war on Austria, the nation in which he, Adolf Hitler was born. Uh, the day after that, the 21st, is Holocaust Remembrance Day, and it's also the day of 1836 when Sam Houston captured Santa Ana at San Jacinto. So it's also remembered that for Asians, April 18th, the day before Patriot's Day, which is essentially uh, coming up uh, to us within 48 hours, is the anniversary of the 1942 Jimmy Doolittle terrorist raid on the city of Tokyo Thai. And uh, so that is something that should put all of this into some uh, perspective. But Mr. Wallace has many others. He may have found his notebook yeah. at this point. I do want him to share them with us. Uh, so what I said brought many other things to mind with you, I, I'm sure. Tell us what else comes to your mind about the perspective of the significance of this date, aside from the start of the American Civil War between the states, the fact that's tax day, and uh, why they would initiate tax day April 15th on the anniversary date of the commencement of the American Civil War between the states is beyond me, but I think it's their way of fingering everyone who they consider be, to be a rebel. But, uh, Mr. Wallace, add to that perspective for us, please. You'd live in what essentially was uh, once a member state of the Confederate States of America. I don't know if your background goes back to those days, but tell us about it. Half the, yeah. And um, uh, I also have half my family uh, comes from Massachusetts, so um, we're still trying to find out if, um, you know, everybody's okay and uh, doing well. Um, 
So yeah, I have Yankee and uh, Southern uh, roots. But um, yeah, uh, Lincoln was the 14th. The Titanic was the 14th. Uh, the BP oil was around here. Uh, Martin Luther King. Uh, there was a whole host of others. This was just um, my short list. I couldn't find the big one. Um, the other thing that was important that you brought up, um, all these groups, whenever they, uh, with Randy Weaver, the only reason why he was an exception, uh, they burned, they burned a lot of these people, they burned the, the uh, uh, MOVE group, uh, they burned the Sinhalese Liberation, Liberation Army, they um, burned the Grand Civilians. Uh, they attempted to burn Randy Weaver, but the, the, the fuel bladder that they were going to hoist up in the air, they, the reporters caught before they could. Um, and there's by the way, for the, by the way, Mr. Wallace, they also burned Christopher Dorner, if you remember. That's right. That's right. And there's a reason for that. The reason is, in, in, uh, in, uh, uh, well, it's maybe uh, going down another rabbit trail, but the point is people should see that there's a connection. And um, the other thing that I heard on the news just briefly was that the children of Sandy Hook were actually at the race. Now, what were they doing there? And they were saying, oh, what a shame that, you know, this shooting had taken place. And then, you know, they were all almost summarily bombed. And um, two points about uh, Sandy Hook and Aurora that uh, people don't realize that were connected in this way was the uh, LIBOR, uh, you know, the, the hearing. They were going to uh, be witnesses, both of the fathers were going to be yeah. key witnesses in that. And um, yes. that draws a connection between the two of them. And I was thinking that it really makes no sense for American patriots to do any kind of a domestic uh, terror or, uh, or bombing because, you know, we have the right to protest and, 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 and uh, free speech in the country, so we don't really have to make points by... You know, uh, you know, blowing stuff up. Um, it just doesn't jive right. And then, based on, of course, the history that we just went into, the the uh, unillustrious history of these false flags that have taken place all around this month. And um, another thing about it, if you want to go into a, a cult, there is the spring equinox, which happens around now. And then the major, major uh, holiday of Beltane, or, or Walpurgis Night, and it's the highest day on the Druidic Witch's calendar, and May 1st is the second most sacred holiday, and both human sacrifice required through burning. So, uh, you know, there's various, you know, deeper aspects to all of this, but um, if people want to just, you know, connect things that they can see in links, you know, you have the, um, the dates which are close. Um, a lot of these things are pinned on uh, domestic uh, terrorists, supposedly, um, with the same animals, you know, that they were angry at the, the, the government for whatever reason. And, um, you know, just the, the oddity of having an Aurora shooting and so close to a Sandy Hook shooting and now so close to, to a bombing and... Um, you know, the way that I looked at it was that uh, under the Clinton years, not that I make a distinction, but Democrats and Republicans are different, but um, Clinton uh, uh, had his gun ban, and he tried to push through the health care, and I don't think he was popular enough to do it. Um, with Obama, he actually tried the same two things, and, you know, riding that wave of popularity, you know, he got a little bit further. So, you know, the agendas kind of stay the same. And the tactics, you know, that they use, it's funny. Um, you know, it's almost like the Republicans took us to war, um, but when it's domestic and they want to push through those things, they do it with. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm stitched up with my jaw. I really, I just wanted to make those points. And um, uh, well, actually, if you could, if you could review for me, this was so important. You you were talking about the 14th, which of course was the day before the 15th, on which the Boston massacre took place. You were talking about Lincoln Lincoln's was assassination t took place, the yep. BP oil spill, and Martin Luther King's assassination. Was that all on the 14th? I believe Martin Luther King's was the 14th. I was trying to. Um, it was definitely in April around this time. Um, right. People can check it for me to, to make sure I was I was just you know rushing through. 
um, you know, the search engine's trying to find it. Um, but the Titanic was the 14th, and we know uh, um, that after that, you know, a lot of the, the central bankers that wouldn't go along were actually uh, sunk on the Titanic. So, you know, after that, we have the... Actually, uh, I did not know that. That's fascinating. That That's fascinating. I did not know that. Uh, the, the Titanic, uh, that, that might have been just one of those unhappy accidents because the Titanic, it's... it's uh, it's, it would be very difficult for me to conceive of that as a conspiracy, but you never know. Do, well, is it, well, do you think that they uh, might have Douglas, intentionally... I did, I did a video on YouTube, um, and you mentioned this, about uh, the book uh, Titan. And it's yes. about a uh, Steve vessel 14 years before. Just like how they pre predict things in movies, so you can go through Hidden in Hollywood 9-11, and you can see all the numerous movies that reference 9-11 before it happened. And what happened was was that uh, around this time, 14 years before it happened, um, I went through exhaustively um, the size of the ship in the book was the same, the name was the same, the amount of lifeboats was the same, the speed was the same, it was built out of iron, it was called unsinkable. I mean, there were so many similarities that it just defies coincidence. And right. uh, even the, uh, the, the, the uh, I think I said the speed, I'll have to go back and look, this is a while ago, I think I made this video a year ago, but um, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go back and I'll look up that information, because that's really worth looking into. And, well, Mr. Um, Wallace, never be afraid to post that onto my Facebook. Also, don't be afraid to send a link to it to my producer, Thomas Becker, and he will be happy to put a link to it in the chat room. And while we're oh, at it... Right. What do you think was the reason, and this comes from my lovely secretarial assistant, Noreen Halpant, who, uh, of course, uh, has always enjoyed uh, your input, uh, and uh, she said you'd look ha handsome if only there weren't four of you. At any rate, uh, she <laughs> says, uh, why do you feel was the reason they invited the families of the victims of Sandy Hook uh, to the Boston Marathon? What, what what conceivable reason could there be for that? It's very it is very strange that they be subjected to this second tragedy. That's it's it's uh, it's 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 bizarre, and uh, I can't even imagine what they're feeling. Absolutely. The, 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 uh, well, the only connection that I could make, and it, and it might be a little bit tenuous, but um, was that um, like I said with the whole Libor thing. Uh, maybe there was more to it. Maybe there were more family members that, um, you know, had something to do with the whole case. And <clears throat> and what happened was, was that, um, you know, uh, well, the way that I looked at it was this. Uh, it was, it, when you k kill children, it's very innocent, so you're going to immediately get the hearts and minds of the people uh, on your side if they're very reactionary and you want to ram through a bill. So uh, the more innocent blood that you spill, like let's say those children weren't there, uh, you know, just people running a marathon for charity, you know how people do that, um, you know, you'd say, oh, my God, that's totally uh, uh, wicked, and you'd immediately get the emotional response that they, they look for. Um, people might want to look at when the rice tag was actually uh, burned down, too. That might have been around now as well. Um, the reason I would think was because... Um, uh, that is a good question. Um, I heard it as just like almost like a blur, almost like in passing. It was real early this morning. It was sketchy, the details that came in. So um, I just think it has something to do with pulling on the heartstrings. If it doesn't have to do with the whole reward thing and getting, you know, kind of like uh, uh, revenge for well, anybody we... that would, or to scare anybody into talking. Right. Well, I do. I do want to thank you very much because of your periodontal work. A lot of what you're saying is it, it's you know you're coming through uh, lucidly enough, but um, it's it's you know it's kind of a chore to listen to you only because of the uh, the stitches in your mouth are kind of holding your lips together. <laughs> so, yeah. so what I'm going to do? Normally is it's other things. Go. Normally it's other things. By the way. <laughs> right. Uh, no, right. I apologize. No, that's fine. But, Mr. Wallace, if you don't mind, I'm going to let you go for now. You know you're always welcome to call back, and I very much appreciate your calling in today. It was very important. It allowed me to segue into the importance of this period of time of April. So um, is there one last thing you want to say to our listenership before I let you go? 
Um, no, I just hope they appreciate the information, and I hope they appreciate the, the host because, uh, like I said, I always learn something, and um, uh, you're doing a great job. So take care. Well, and, bless you. Um, Thank you so much. My, I'm going to rest my mouth. <laughs> Yes, you do that. Thank you, Mr. Wallace. You take care. Good luck with your mouth. We have the lovely Heather Holman online with us. Uh, my mistress has been flagellating me recently about uh, calls uh, that I uh, allow to go on for too long. So we will uh, maintain our conversation, which I normally happily drag on to maybe about four or five minutes, uh, Ms. Holman. And uh, your new icon is uh, delightful. Uh, the <laughs> your, are you purposefully using a kind of like a European tengu? Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the Japanese goblins of the treetops, but uh, that's what it looks like. <laughs> oh, yeah, that the, is. Yeah. So, yes, I am. Uh, yeah. Now, what kind of uh, insight can you give us into what's going on today uh, for um, the this, this tragic incident before I get back into my uh, monologuing about it? Well, um I don't know. There's that card game. I don't know if um, I just started listening. I just got home from work. So forgive me if I seem redundant or if you guys have already discussed some of the stuff that I wanted to mention. Um, <clears throat> there's like a card game um, that is Illuminati and they play this card game. And I was just wondering if you knew anything about that or if that's like just a sham or something that someone made up. Oh, no, the card game was uh, designed by Steve Jackson, who I personally met, and uh, he won't remember me because, again, that you're talking about somebody who deals with many people, and Steve Jackson was what they call a gamer. Uh, he, was, uh, in, he was basically very enamored of Robert Anton Wilson, and uh, Robert Anton Wilson, I know, um, has a, uh, a, a great, uh, holds, holds a great, uh, shall I say, rapport with much of the subculture of the United States, and he was always very sensitive to many social issues, and so he's very popular, and a lot of people uh, hold his memory uh, with affection. Nevertheless, what I try to point out is that Robert Anton Wilson himself, while he was not an evil person, and he was a very good wordsmith, was also a writer who, like many writers, was essentially a starving artist. And uh, like many writers, he would go for a contract uh, where it could support him uh, in, in some food and keep his rent paid uh, for a few months. So he ultimately was contracted for something that became a very uh, universal bestseller, uh, and it was very fortunate for him. But the contract works were the Illuminati tri Trilogy. And uh, in which he wrote about the cosmic trigger, and he was contracted to present a great deal of false information through those novels. The uh, great problem was that his writing was of such high quality that these became a cult classic uh, upon campuses all over the world. Uh, they were translated into multiple languages, and uh, particularly in France uh, and other areas of uh, Europe. Uh, he basically made a deep impression on people that somehow he was telling the truth when he was telling the exact opposite through the Illuminati trigger. Uh, the Illuminati trigger and the, excuse me, the Cosmic Trigger, the Illuminati Conspiracy, the Cosmic Trigger was one of the books, or one of the, uh, I believe, the conclusion of the trilogy. I might be incorrect on that, but I've never been a fan of his writing. But the point was that he um, made a lot of false uh, um, misdirections. Assumptions claims. or something? Yeah, well, no, they were not assumptions. It was what he was told to write. Uh, How about the, preconceived notions? Uh, well, shall we say, yeah, I mean, well, that's a good one. But the, uh, the, the, another way of expressing it would be, how about propaganda? <laughs> which is right. basically Illuminati. Yeah, propaganda by the baseline Illuminati to misdirect a lot of people into uh, uh, who the bad guys were. And uh, so that, of course, when I bring that up, a lot of people think I'm attacking him, which I'm not. And uh, his writing, unfortunately, was of such high quality that he uh, successfully carried out what his propaganda, what his, uh, his, his sponsors had paid him to propagandize. And uh, so the important thing to bring up about the Illuminati game was that Steve Jackson was very enamored uh, of that from his college days. So he designed a card game around it, which um, apparently was very accurate in many of its predictions of the collapse of the Twin Towers, etc. So now, was, the, was in, his prediction accurate of the card for today's um, attack or I yeah, did, yesterday? I did not know that. 
I did not know that there was a a card. I believe. For, uh, I don't know. I just I saw somewhere. I just yeah. There it. is a card. There is a card of a of a hiker or a jogger in the deck. Yeah, okay. that's the one. So. But it's also yeah. There's other, also other cards that. Believe me, I'm not very familiar with this deck because I couldn't stand the game. Uh, Nor am but, I. Uh, yeah. Yes. They, Yes, uh, but there are many cards that are quite similar to other incidents. There was the Tokyo Earthquake uh, uh, card, kind of like the, the Japanese disaster card. Uh, there was the uh, uh, various uh, other cards that he had that were also very similar. If anyone can bring them up, uh, be, they're, they're, they're welcome to do so. Now, even though I met him personally, it's not like I know too much about his life, but it would not surprise me if he had been also contracted by the Illuminati to uh, produce something uh, that would outline plans they had for the future because I don't personally credit him as being very intuitive. <laughs> so right. okay. he might have been uh, fed uh, uh, some information about plans for the future. Uh, I, I noticed that Andre Hodge is online. He's certainly welcome to Skype in if he is. Uh, uh, you know what I up. wanted to say about that um, that deck is that they uh, I'm I'm in one of those pictures, and I did not give my permission for that. Because <laughs> there's incredible. a picture. well, well, the, the pictures are the the drawings, aren't they? Yeah, they're like um, they're illustrated. Right. So, so um, it's and, not necessarily a photograph, but you feel that the likeness or the semblance to yourself. Oh, absolutely! Is, I it's like shocking. I and wow. I did not give my permission for that. Just so it, you know, I declare. Oh, <laughs> those, those, those. No, I appreciate that. Those, those cards came out. Now, if I'm not mistaken, they came out in the 1980s. How old were you when the cards came out? I well, mean, I, you know, I what's read. funny is that um, the age that I'm depicted in is approximately the age I am now. Right. Right. And it's the uh, one. If if you if anyone wants to know, it's the one that um, is the London. It's got the, the London. Um, with a with the clock tower, you know, a mad painter. Do you know anything? What I'm talking about, the Olympics. No, so I you, just know that we're talking about that particular card earlier today on the show. Right. Oh, well, the interesting. one with the the one with the Olympics in London is the one, and each person is um, in is running, and if there's like flames or something, but um, and then each color of the ring in the Olympics um, stand for something, and the green one is the one that I think is me. In fact, I know it's me. When I look at it, it's like looking in a mirror. Wow. And I did not get well, my permission you... for that. I did not, you know, get my permission for that at all. Right. Oh, by the way, um, uh, uh, Nighthawk um, has told us that it was the 80s, 1995. Uh, so that definitely was a different world back then. Uh, I, I want to thank you for sharing that, Heather. A lot of people will be You're looking welcome. that card up now, and they'll now okay. know exactly what you look like. Well, and, you already uh, do. Yes. Well, I, I, I know to an extent. But uh, at any rate, dear lady, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you go for now because I do want to bring up the work that the Nighthawk, our uh, owner of this Revolution radio station, has actually done a great deal of work on the marathon bombing. And I do want to bring up the fact that he's uploaded uh, these onto YouTube. So I want to uh, plug that for him. Is there any last thing you want to share with our uh, listenership for today? Because I'm going to be speaking to you again on Saturday, no doubt. Okay. Um, listen to the roundtable tonight. I'm on the roundtable, everybody, in two hours. <laughs> Sounds great. That's right. I need to plug Miss Holman as well. Who is your co-host again? I keep forgetting his name. I keep thinking it's like uh, rehabilitation or something. Oh, shut it? up. <laughs> his name is Rectify, and it's um, his birthday today. Oh, uh, happy birthday, Rectify. Uh, yeah, now, or R3. I, I prefer to call him R3. R3. Yes, yeah. thank you, R3, for your infinite patience with me. And I assure <laughs> you, you, R3, don't consider, don't consider anything I'm saying to be antagonistic. I hate to say it, my mind's in the gutter. When I think of rectify, I keep thinking of rectal something. But, um, <laughs> all right, dear lady, I will let you okay, go. Okay, bye, Douglas. Bye, bye, take care. Ciao. And, uh, so um, our Nighthawk is mentioning that the full cleaned-up scanner tapes are uploading now to YouTube. 
first two and a half hours. And uh, so, oh, cleaned up is what he is trying to say. Right. And uh, so hopefully he hasn't been uh, dragging on that same bong that uh, our friend uh, Thomas Becker and myself have been indulging in, uh, where everything is filtered through that peppermint schnapps days. So, uh, but at any rate, yes, the, what he is saying is the full cleaned up scanner tapes are uploading now to YouTube, first two and a half hours. And what Nighthawk has done is yeoman work, where as always, as he did after the, uh, he says it's his picky voice to text software. Yes. Okay. There we are. Oh, okay. Yes. Of course, good sir. It helps when the words aren't slurred. <laughs> At any rate, moving right along, uh, before we get my into any more trouble, uh, one of the things that the Nighthawk brought up about the Aurora shooting, where he did an enormous amount of work on that, was naturally the fact that there are only four Dr. Lynn Fentons in the United States. One of them, of course, was the Air Force psychiatrist who had taken part in programming uh, the Aurora shooter who of course was not so much the shooter as he was a scapegoat and uh that dr lynn fenton has the exact same name as of course my manageress laurian ann fenton's sister dr lynn fenton who is another lynn fenton with an md now how is that for creepy uh what are the odds of that of course speculation has always been there that laurian ann fenton is my handler i don't foresee myself dyeing my hair any bright shades of technicolor green or orange anytime soon and uh going out and um attacking theaters uh mostly uh because they're so empty these days since no one can afford to see an effing movie talk about an investment if you go there with your family and you're buying popcorn and other uh various uh things to plump into your mouth uh, while you're watching television to keep yourself orally occupied, uh, then uh, definitely uh, you are spending what with the tickets and the food? You're, you're easily going 75 bucks, three quarters of a $100. Uh, now, that's a hell of an investment for most films, which are absolute pure raw crap. Uh, you suffer through them more than you're entertained by them. Uh, and uh, so, oh, Heather really called to tell me about the Titanic, uh, and Nighthawk is saying, people are also now putting out fake Illuminati cards to fit what they want. That's a very good point, sir. Well taken. Thank you, sir. By the way, that should expand the game uh, for all you gamers out there, and I think that that's a fabulous idea, <laughs> coming out with alternative Illuminati uh, addend uh, addendum packs. Uh, so there you go. Um, hope Steve Jackson appreciates the plug. Uh, at, at any rate, uh, he never did come up with the Asian tanks for his ogre game of nuclear tanks, which, by the way, is, of course, an idea that should never be realized, uh, because if you have nuclear-powered uh, armored fighting vehicles, naturally you're going to be essentially irradiating uh, the landscape permanently around you. So unless your entire intent is to make the land uh, forever unusable, like what the Americans uh, have attempted to do with al Iraq you're not going to be producing nuclear tanks. Uh, but uh, uh, there is only one deck uh, has been brought forward by Heather Holman. Actually, I, I don't know about that. Uh, that. That might be the case, but uh, Steve Jackson kept expanding it, so I'm not sure about that. I, I do know that there were several, uh, several uh, extensions to the game, so I'm not quite sure about that, Heather. But uh, definitely, um, I say uh, hello to Rectal Fry. I'm, I'm sorry, rectify your co-host. Happy birthday to him, and uh, we and do join him as well as his co-host, the lovely Heather Holman, tonight, Tuesday night after the Hijacker, right after my program. Now, uh, before our program comes to an end, I do want to uh, attend to some of the other aspects of the uh, bombing. We have, of course, people asking, who bombed uh, the Boston Marathon? And, of course, there is the potential of a terrorist attack from North Korea, which is obviously absurd. But people are responding with, there are plenty of candidates for it. Here are just a few. North Korean agents, Al-Qaeda, Mafia, Irish mob, Mexican drug cartels, Christian radicals, white supremacists, neo-Nazis, lone wolf. Oh, it's very likely it was a lone wolf following the ideology of another terror group or hate group. The bombs would have had to have been de-detonated remotely. Well, he could have used a timer. The bomb went off right as the marathon ended. And sources are, of course, CNN, BBC, Al Jazeera, 
NPR, the usual suspects. Okay, this is absurd. It's beyond absurd. Uh, the uh, idea of this being someone of any of those groups is what they program you to hate. They program you to hate these target groups because they don't want you to hate them when they are more than likely the perpetrators. Who are they? Your United States government. And uh, to give you an example of what happens when a lone wolf does something, they cover it up. You never hear about it. I'll give you an example. In the meantime, uh, Nighthawk says, kind of like how Nostradamus quatrains only come true after the event. I have an original Beck and have seen many on the net that are not in said deck. Okay, right. Okay, so he has an original deck. But keep in mind, sir, of course, there were, there were expansions. There were at least three expansion packs. So unless you've assembled, like, all that there, there were, like, man, there may have been more than that. There may have been, like, half a dozen uh, expansion packs. Uh, don't forget, Steve Jackson was running a very large cottage, cottage industry, comparatively speaking. So it's conceivable that others I, – I'm sure people are faking them out there. Uh, and uh, Heather says moving pictures, but what would be interesting would be someone taking the time and the creative energy to assemble an Illuminati Steve Jackson card game tarot deck. <laughs> now that would be fun. <laughs> then you could really screw up on telling the future and uh, have yourself a blast. Don't do that. It might make them all come true. Uh, at any rate, uh, the um, what I would like to say is a great example of a lone wolf was October 1st of 2005. It was Saturday night. It was 7.20 p.m. There were 85,000 people in the Oklahoma City Stadium. And what happened was that Joel Hendricks III, a very spoiled background, uh, wanted to honor uh, and avenge the uh, 10th anniversary date of October 1st, which was the incarceration of the blind sheikh who first attacked the Twin Towers. He also wanted to celebrate the Bali bombing anniversary of October 10th. Now, the reason someone would be twisted enough to uh, celebrate both of these incidents was because he was a Colorado Springs native who basically had been Islamized by his dorm mate in what was known as Little Tehran at Oklahoma City University. So basically, we have uh, this um, the person who lived at uh, the uh, Oklahoma University, uh, and uh, his dorm roommate uh, was from Pakistan. And uh, for decades, there was a very large Muslim population in uh, Norman uh, Edmund and uh, Oklahoma University in Oklahoma. And uh, they all take engineering programs to learn about explosives, and, and it's basically their ordinance training. So uh, what happened was uh, – and by the way, I am not exaggerating. Do not consider that to be in any way, shape, or form racist. Uh, his Pakistani roommate was, of course, uh, uh, escaped from the FBI because they can't hold on to anyone. Uh, his room was filled with unstable uh, explosives, uh, primarily nitroglycerin, and uh, they had to use controlled demolitions to basically blow that entire wing of the dorm to prevent it from exploding on its own. Uh, but uh, in terms of what had happened was that uh, our boy – uh, Joel Hendricks III was a madrasa student. Uh, he uh, basically was trained. Uh, he lived in an Oklahoma City apartment when he became radicalized. Uh, he uh, actually, no, he, he continued living in his dorm. The person who I'm thinking of who lived in the Oklahoma City apartment was the 20th hijacker, Zacharias Marsawi, who was uh, one of the only convicted 9-11 mass assailants. And uh, he trained in the same madrasa that trained Joel Hendricks, uh, the third, a madrasa, which, of course, is still in operation. Uh, what uh, Joel Hendricks did was he purchased large amounts of ammonium nitrate. That was the key uh, re ingredient, by the way, of the original 1995 Oklahoma City bomb. And uh, he um, basically 
uh, purchased all of these one week before his attempted uh, mass assault, which turned out to be the explosion that was muffled throughout the world. And uh, he approached the stadium again, 7.20 p.m. It's loaded with 85,000 people. Saturday night, they've got a football game going. He uh, attempted to enter the stadium wearing his traditional Muslim beard and his full suicide bomb rack. He had a vest with all of the tubes of nitro that were uh, ready to blow. The uh, security, of course, would not let him in for reasons that I would hope would be patently obvious. Uh, he finally uh, got uh, disappointed and uh, basically headed towards the microbiology lab in the hopes that he would blow all of the bacteria that was being used in there and release it onto the population at large. Uh, the Nor Norman, Oklahoma Disease Labs Research Center is what is on site of the university, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, by the way, he tried to enter the stadium gate six times uh, and uh, w finally uh, was repulsed. And uh, what happened was he was meandering from the stadium towards the Norman, Oklahoma Disease Labs Research Center, and uh, somewhere along the line, he blew. Now, this is extremely fortunate because he blew an extremely empty, isolated area at that time of night, which I believe was the Campus University Park. Uh, it, the explosion was so powerful that it rocked the stadium, and people heard and felt the tremor within the stadium and they thought that someone was lobbing mortar rounds into the stadium. They all began using their cell phones to try to call the police and the sheriffs to find out exactly what happened. And uh, what happened was, of course, the, um, basically uh, they were told that nobody knew what was going on. But um, the uh, police reports... Uh, basically uh, were coming in uh, that uh, there was a tree uh, nearby where he exploded that was filled with ball bearings and nails uh, that it absorbed within its bark from this guy. And this, this tree was like, you know, something like half a city block away. So if he had gotten into the stadium and uh, blown... Uh, his uh, bomb, which, by the way, was also the same ingredients used in the London bombing of July of 2005. Uh, I believe it was uh, the acetone triperoxide, uh, highly unstable. Uh, it was manufactured in his uh, own home at suicidal risk already. And uh, if that had gone off, we would have had probably one of the largest uh, mass casualty and mass fatality incidents in the United States. So uh, that, of course, is one of the bombs you've never heard of, uh, an attempt at bombing, and they covered that up because they didn't want any uh, blowback on the Muslim community, which, of course, runs the United States through the House of Saud. End of story. You really want uh, uh, who's running the show? No NAG, no Nazi occupation government, no Zog, no Zionist occupation government. What you have is a SOG, a Saudi occupation government. By the way, uh, Nighthawk does want us to know in the last few minutes the original Illuminati was released in the 1980s. There have been several re releases. The game has also several spin offs and expansion packs. But the conspiracy mongers usually assume that there is a single game and mix all the cards, despite that they have all been released in different years as part of different products. This is significant because some of the claims center around the dates of events and the assumed release date of the game, claiming that particular cards are prophetic of those events. Illuminati, the game of conspiracy, 1982. 1987, 1999 is the original card game. It comes complete with 110 cards, card list of the 1999 edition. Illuminati Y2K is a supplement slash expansion set to the 1999 edition that adds more cards to the original game. Illuminati Bavarian Fire Drill is the second expansion set to the 1999 edition. Then there are at least two more. Illuminati New World Order, also known as INWO, in Wolf 1995 is a trading collectible card game. Unlike the original game that comes with all cards, players have to buy booster packs to compose their deck. 
has two supplements, InWoe Assassins, 1996, and InWoe Subgenius, 1998, based on the Church of the Subgenius. Full card list for all can be found at uh, a link provided by, uh, by the way, um, three minutes left, but I hear music already. Uh, it, that, uh, Douglas, please minutes. apologize to R3. I did! <laughs> okay, we'll see you Saturday night.